Hey guys, Evans with Z1. That was that was really gay. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, Evans with Z1 wanted today, and first of all, I'll get this out of the way. I'm pretty annoyed, and it'll probably come off as me being frustrated because it's the second time recording this. I went and recorded it all, went through all the prep. It was really good. I was really proud of it. But then um, we like uploaded the footage onto a computer. We watched it back on the camera. It was all there, fine. Put it on the computer. It was just gone. I have no idea why. But this camera, which eventually I'll find out the name of, and it will actually be in the description. Um, for some reason it hates me. But, last video I touched on the fact that I grew up in a haunted village. Um, haunted village being Clop Hill. Clop Hill, to prove it's haunted, it's had books based off it, it's even had a bloody film based off it, which is like a, a documentary fictional... I don't even know if it's fiction, it's a really weird film. But Clop Hill is on the map because it has this haunted ruined church. It's haunted supposedly because it like faces south, when churches are supposed to face north or something like that. Apparently that makes it haunted, who knows? But there have been haunted sightings, there have been ghost sightings, there have been paranormal activities, everything with this village. And I grew up there, so um, I kind of, like, I, I hit the age of adolescence and I was thinking I want to grow up to be a journalist. In fact, why be a journalist? Why not be a ghost hunter? So I was like, I was really into the supernatural and being in a haunted village, that makes you even more interested in that sort of thing. So I kind of don't, don't mock me, I kind of sort of kept this journal of everything that happened, every little sort of paranormal thing. I wrote it down and just kept record of it, thinking, oh, maybe someday I can sell, send, sell it to like a magazine or something, even though they're really badly written, they're really short entries with no detail anyone could have made up. So I, I don't think anyone's going to take them with any credibility. But due to the interest in the last video, I sort of, um, I dug out this box, because I used to, I, I call it like the mystery box, I, I used to put anything I found up the woods, any kind of item of interest and all the entries in the box. And the box, managed to fish out, is right here. So like, there's a few, um, a few random things, I keep my pocket watch in there, this isn't, I didn't find this up the woods, god forbid. The pocket watch is like my favourite thing, it's probably the most expensive thing I have, but um, well, there's no point talking about that, that's not haunted unfortunately, that would be cool though. Um, other things, there's just random things, as they've found up the woods, random weird quirky things. This thing, you might recognise, this was actually in the animated music video I did. It's just like a really random sharp stone. It's kind of, it kind of symbolises a tooth. I, I don't know what that is, or um, what its purpose is, but who knows. And there's just random loads of quirky things in this box. Coins, because of course coins are mysterious and everyone keeps coins. But the entries are all at the bottom, so I'll fish them out and um, I'll, I'll, I'll read out a few of them. Now, I will say, these entries are like, because I got lazy and like when I started as a teenager, I thought, oh, this can be really cool. I eventually got to a point where some things happened and I just thought, uh, can't really be asked to write it down. And I gave up with a few of them, so they're very bit scattered. Um, the first one isn't actually an entry, awkwardly enough. This one is a card. Now, my kitchen, for some reason, I thought it was more haunted than any other room in my house. So I kind of agree to myself, all right, every time something happens in the kitchen, I'm going to do like a little tally. And um, and it, it was weird, because things like uh, this happens to everyone. When you open a cupboard and something falls out, that used to happen to me all the time. Like, I've been around friends' houses, never happened. Every time a friend comes around my house, I open a cupboard, whoosh, it's just, it just, like something throws it out of the cupboard. It used to happen all the time. Things used to fall off side, things used to smash. Um, even things like the oven used to just randomly spark or turn on. So um, I used to keep tally of every time that happened, but then eventually I gave up because that was a very stupid thing that didn't really lead to anything. I don't know how I thought I was going to sell that to a magazine or whatever, but there you go, that's childish me. Um, first story is this one, which I, I like. I wrote down the date and where it happened, thinking I could like draw a map and like the dates and everything and be like a ghost hunter. And it was so, it was so bad. I even gave him titles. This one's called Power Geist. But, um, okay, I'll, I'll need to give context for this. I'll need to give context for this one actually because, um, I had neighbours move in to on, on my street. They were called Matt and Haley, and we kind of befriended them, got close to them. We, we used to babysit for them a lot. So, a lot of things actually seemed to happen around their house, and seeing as we were in a group with friends, it was even more weird when they happened because it's like when something happens to you on your own, you're like, oh, my mind's playing tricks, but around their house, so many weird things happened. So this one was at Matt's house, and um, I'll read it out word for word. Babysitting for Matt again with Danielle, Hobbs and Danny. We were all sat on the sofa watching a film like usual, and then suddenly the power went out. We turned the lights on on our phones and thought there was a power cut. 
Weirdly, the lights still worked when we turned them back on, and the plugs by the TV were also turned off, even though none of us were near them. We thought we were pranking- yeah. Um, cause like, we, we all sat on the sofa basically, like, we all sat on the sofa, TV over there in the distance, and then um, just suddenly everything went off, and we assumed it was a power cut. But then like, we pulled out our phones, lit up the area so we could see where we are going, the light, the light switch to the room, was physically turned off, weirdly enough, and we just, we just couldn't see. And then we went over to the TV, and it, that hadn't turned off, like, by the thing, it was physically turned off. And we all thought, oh, we were playing pricks, like, someone must... Playing pricks. <laughs> playing tricks. I, I kind of crossed pranks and tricks together. We all thought we were doing that, and, um... And no, none of us were near the plugs, none of us could have possibly done it, so that really freaked us out. Um... Next one, this one is actually, it's a short entry, but this one scared, like, it traumatised me, um, in a weird way. This one is one of the earliest. This was in March 2007, and really late at night I was looking out the window when I saw a huge black cloaked figure floating towards my room, like the Grim Reaper. It was really cloudy and the moon was really bright, and that's, that's all that's written down. Now basically, this, like since then, I've passed it off as being a nightmare, but I, I had a big brother, he used to um, sleep in my room, and then he eventually moved out, so I got my own bedroom as opposed to having to sleep with my other brother in like um, a bunk bed. So having my own room was great, but then on one of like, um, soon after moving in, I had this nightmare, and it was looking out the window just seeing that thing floating towards me, and it, it scared me. I, I didn't think it was a nightmare, I thought it actually happened, because I was young and naive at the time. And I hated it, it terrified me. I could not sleep in that room for years after that happened. and. Um, and I'd say that's one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Obviously, thinking back, yeah, it's probably a nightmare, but I think it actually happened. And in my head, part of me still does, because of how much I was shook up by it. Um, next one, this is a bit of a longer one. Oh yeah, this one. Um, this is Danielle's shower story. I had a friend called Danielle, and she was in that story there. And she was the one who originally befriended Matt, and she... Um, was originally asked to babysit on her own for once because um, we were all busy doing stuff and Yeah, so she was babysitting on her own and she I'll read it all again She told me that she didn't have time to shower after getting back from the kennel So she shared so she showered at Matt's when in the shower suddenly the lights went out And then a few seconds later there was a loud banging from down the hallway that was getting closer and closer to the shower She was terrified but managed to turn the light back on and there was nothing so like, um, because again that's written badly, um, she was standing in a shower, having a shower and everything, suddenly lights go out, I, I don't know if the shower stopped or not, but um, then from the hallway, because like the shower's here, long hallway, and then there's like stairs going up, um, everything went out in the shower, suddenly like boom 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 getting closer to the shower, in the house alone with a baby, that would have terrified me, and that's probably one of the scariest things she ever told me, and she was a close friend, I've known her since I was like, Four? No, yeah, four, because that was from primary school. No, no, since I was four, I trust her so much. She's done pranks on me, but she's always told me after. With her story, she she didn't say she was lying. I could see she was visib visibly shooken up, so I, I genuinely believe her, and I believe that happened. Um, this one's really short. And, like, you can see my attempt at being cool there, trying to reverse mirror. Um, but this one, I was getting ready to sleep, so I so closed the curtains. I looked in the mirror and they were still open, so I turned to check, but they were still closed, and then checked the mirror again, and in the mirror it was it was right, the curtains were closed. So that's just a really weird one, again it's like one of those situations where your mind could be playing tricks on you, but I know what I saw, and I wrote this pretty much straight after, this was back in D December 2011, so I wasn't that young, I was only four years ago. Um, and if you physically see something, you see the curtains open in the mirror, but you know you've closed them, it's like, your mind can't deceive you that much. Not, I, I can understand maybe you're drunk or something, but it's just really weird. It seems like one of those things that something weird was definitely going on there. Um, there's a few more left. Um, I'm, try I'm trying to get to the... Oh, okay, that's the next one. Um, this one was 28th of June, and this, this is one of the more recent ones, actually. So definitely, I don't think this was one when my mind was playing tricks on me. Um, I will actually say this that way. It's like a mid-story interval. I do believe in the supernatural. I don't believe I'll go walk the earth after dying. 
I believe there's something. I believe science can't explain it yet. I believe, like, I, I guess I believe in spirits and stuff, but not just straight up ghosts. Um, so I'll get that out of the way, that's my standing on the supernatural. Um, so, on the 28th of June, 2013, I was at home, slightly drunk after being out with friends, and I was lying in bed on my laptop. I was speaking to Lena on Skype. No, it wasn't Skype, it was Steam. I don't know why I wrote on Skype, because I wasn't on Skype. But um, when suddenly out of the corner of my eye, something came across the room from my wardrobe towards me. It was like a big black spot, which could have been a spider, but it looked much bigger and thicker. I eventually checked under my bed when I could actually find a finally mustered the effort to get up and can find anything. So that was something like, um, imagine you've seen something so vividly and then it just, it, it's there, it, it comes towards you. You would, you would be so scared. And granted, in that one I said I was drunk, but not to the point where I was passed out and I, um, I was seeing things. When you're drunk, you don't see things, your views on reality are just warped. So it could have been a spider. Um, and maybe my drunk eyes saw it as a, um, saw it as something else, but it was it was huge, and I'm sure it wasn't a spider. So um, so I, I I don't know what to say about that, but that's what I saw, and um, that, that's what I wrote down. I I clearly was shook up by it enough to the point where I felt the need to write it down as a haunting. Um, this one's pretty long, so I guess I'll paraphrase or something. Um, 21st of March 2012. Some new people moved into Back Street. I mean. This is, this is Matt and Haley, who I mentioned before. Um, they wanted to go out for the evening to celebrate, but needed someone to look after their child. They asked Danielle, who asked if she could bring some friends along to keep them company, so I went with Hobbs and Joe. Uh, we were watching random films on their television when suddenly the channel started changing, but the remote was on the table. The volume was also randomly going up and down, even after taking the batteries out. It kept happening. So like, um, one sec, what have I written at the end? Oh yeah, we were also hanging in the, hearing a banging from upstairs, like a random noise, which was creeping us out because the only thing up there was a baby. Um, so yeah, we were sitting on the sofa again watching a TV. Remote was there. There wasn't like any other remote. We we knew that it was like our first time babysitting for them, and um, the channel just kept changing and like changing volume. It wasn't um, like any kind of interference because I've never seen that happen on a TV. But it was like the remote was physically pressing buttons, but the remote was right in front of us. We could see it wasn't. Um, so that's that story. It's probably dragging on a bit now, so I'll, I'll just say um, the last one I have here. This one was done on the 28th of August 2010. Um, ah, this one's going to need a bit of context too, actually. Um, over the summer, we got bored. We were kids in school. We got bored so easily. We had Clop Hill Woods, and then at the end of the woods there was a field. In this field there was like an old abandoned farm and shed. So we decided to take that, take to that and make it our sort of hideout, our den. So we repaired it, we sort of built furniture, we built cupboards and chairs and stuff, it was so cool. Um, and we, we did that for summer, it was the best thing ever. Then school started up, we neglected it a bit, got to winter, it got too cold to go up there, and we never really went there again. Um, this one, um, in this story, me and Danny decided to go up to our den after leaving it for nearly a year. We went inside and it had been completely trashed, like someone had broken in. We stepped over the broken door and I saw our Scrabble board, oh, um, we took a load of board games up so we could play like when we were bored, so I took up my um, version of Scrabble. It was actually Upward, it wasn't Scrabble, but it's the same rules and you have like letter tiles. Um, I saw our Scrabble board on the table, my heart froze because I saw a message on it, like a message that had been written out, and um, I warned Danny and he forced me to go and check, then the message said, Clop Hill is deaf on it. We took a photo and then ran away. And that's as far as that story goes. That did legitimately scare the daylights out of me. Like, I can't remember my heart ever freezing as much as it did then. Um, and the fact I was actually with someone too who had witnessed it makes me just think even more that's terrifying. Obviously, could be someone playing a prank, but in a village, that's supposedly one of the most haunted. I I'm not going to take my chances. So, um, those are the stories I have on Clock Bill. Like, if you have any questions, you can do a bit of research if you want into the village. Like, there's pages, there's. Um, their stories on random web pages on the internet, then feel free, let me know any interesting ones you find. And just let me know what you thought about all those encounters, I guess. Let me know if you've had any of them, your own, I'd be um, interested to hear them. And let me know what you're going to hear about in future evlogs. Until then, this is me, Evans with F111. This is the longest evlog I've done. And this is me out. Peace.